if you're using generative AI, the first yeah. thing is address the privacy aspect. So if you're, if you're using ChatGPT, it does not give you privacy, the public version, right? So that would yeah. be on our bank computers, you cannot use ChatGPT. It, it does not access it. Yeah. But if you're using it in a particular environment, for example, we allow the use of Bing Chat because it actually sits behind two-factor authentication and we have guarantees that the data is not used by Microsoft. But much better than that even is we have, for example, have FNB Chat for our staff. Yes. So our staff can ask questions on on HR, I think I've showed this to you before. You have. On, on HR, compliance um, and risk, et cetera. And all these documents have already been, let me say vectorized. I know it sounds complicated, but they, we've changed that text into numbers that this um, large language model can really understand well. Okay. And if you want to find something, it can find it immediately. It doesn't have to go and read all those documents. It's already summarized them and, and captured them in a form that is, that is easily searchable and then it can give you an exact answer that is based on your internal information. Because as you say, um, the last thing you want, um, people say, well, it hallucinates or it's a glitch. It's not a glitch. It, that large language model was never fed with your data because why? We didn't publish it on the internet yeah. in the first place. And we want to make sure now that it's not using um, all of that other fake news that it has when it gives yeah. an answer. And actually you can design it. Um, we have a process um, the typical process um, is the retrieval augmented generation. I apologize for using technical terms, but really that is really how we make sure that it is actually answering a question based on internal facts. 